breaking news latest info on school reopening what is going to be happening what is the federal government saying right now about reopening schools nationwide so we're going to be getting into that in this video now basically what has been happening is that the federal government has been saying that uh, the possibility of opening schools again would depend on when the interstate lockdown is going to be lifted so basically the 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 the, the, the opening of schools now is basically resting on whenever the federal government decides to lift the interstate lockdown so that is the lockdown that prevents you from moving from state to state because in most states right now that is within the state you can still move around you can still do some things and all of that but moving from state to state is still prohibited in 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 to, to a large extent because they don't want people introducing uh, coronavirus into different communities, especially communities that have a high level of the virus to bring it into communities that have a lower level of the virus. You don't want to exacerbate the problem. So that's basically what's going on. So that's what they have been saying. But now, now see the, the, what they're actually claiming also is that they need to make sure that this thing gets to a particular point where it is safe enough to reopen schools they don't just want to open schools winning lenny they just want to open everything up like that they say that they don't want to be like nations that open their schools and they were forced to shut down the schools again because there was a serious spike in the levels of covid 19 within the nation now that is actually true that happened in in germany that happened in china but again they, of course they opened again after that but i'm just saying that so they, they actually have a point there that why would you want to rush and reopen if at the end of the day you are just going to lock it down again when there is a spike and all of that that is true but again there are there's actually a major assumption that they are making in this place which is making them to keep what to keep delaying the reopening of schools always remember that children are not vulnerable to this thing at least not anywhere vulnerable as compared to adults when it comes to covid 19 children for the most part are not vulnerable and of course even young adults children young adults but like basically if you're below the age of 50 you are like pretty good to go like you're really really good to go this thing the chances of this thing killing you is almost negligible so that's just the, the fact about it and then there is study there is a study from britain on all around in the european union that shows that children are not giving this thing to their parents so it is more likely that a child gets it from the parent than giving it to the parent which means the risk of having children getting the thing in the school after reopening and then having them spread it all around is very very small almost non-existent so most of the hurdles that you may be scared about in reopening schools have been cleared up by science they have been cleared up scientifically like recognize scientifically verify that these things are not something for you to fear honestly that's basically the way it is because the major thing we are scared about in reopening schools it's not about the children getting it again the federal government knows that the children are not vulnerable to these things now you might get it but for the most part you're probably not even going to have any sort of symptoms and even if you have symptoms it is not going to be severe for the children so you won't even need any form of of medical attention of being admitted or whatever like that it's just something that you may just need to just take a little bit of cold pills and all of that and you know just treat the symptoms if you have running nose if you have cough just treat that and then you're going to be okay so that's basically what is happening if you have ever thought about it how are they treating those people in isolation centers how are they treating those people who have been admitted to the hospitals this is how they treat them this is basically what they do to them and for you to know that, that this thing is not as deadly as they have always said it is one of the reasons why people are running away from isolation centers do you think people who are sick and confined to their beds will be running away from isolation centers it is not possible the reason why they're able to run away is because about 80 percent of people who have this virus are not going to have any symptoms so they are going to feel all right and that's the reason why they're able to scale the fence or run out of the place because they feel like i'm not sick why are they keeping me here even though they believe that the they, 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 they've carried out the test and I'm positive or whatever like that so people are actually skeptical of the test because of this because okay, 
like the way i've heard about the virus is that it is very dangerous and all of that it is you are going to be sick and whatever like that you can't stand up so many things have been hyped about this virus and then they discover that they test positive and nothing is happening to them so they don't know the fact that most people who have the virus don't even have any sort of symptoms they won't even know so it is possible that you've already had the virus three weeks ago and you have antibodies against it right now and you are still running away from the virus you are still using nose masks you don't even know so that's that i mean that's how how on that's 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 a on lethal this thing can be in some aspect or to a particular demographic of people i'm not saying it is not lethal to some people if you are very old it's very very dangerous for you or if you have pre-existing conditions it is very dangerous for you so you need to deal with that so again like i said they have a particular assumption in this and the assumption is that if that i mean the assumption is that there's going to be a vaccine very soon if not if they don't believe that there's going to be a vaccine before the end of 2020 that's this year it means that they are basically telling you right to your face now that they will not be any sort of resumption of schools this year but if there's going to be resumption of schools this year there's no way we are going to have a vaccine before the end of the year like the best chances of getting a vaccine or the earliest chances of getting a vaccine is like let me just say probably december and it's, you're not going to have any sort of dosage for africa here it's probably just all those developed countries are going to be, of course they will be the ones developing it so they are going to be the ones using the first batches again since most people are complaining over here saying that they don't want to be test ground for china or whatever like that of course there are no there, there are no evidence for such conspiracy theories but again they will not be testing it here they will be testing it over there because there have been so many tests going on in the united states and in europe and of course in china also trying to make sure that there is a viable vaccine to be ready as soon as possible according to cnn a vaccine could take as much as eight to ten years sometimes so it is only in this case that they are sort of assuming that if they put in all sort of efforts they might be able to develop a vaccine in a matter of 12 months to 18 months so by all chances it is almost like impossible for us to get a vaccine this year so that that, that so, so so whatever they are basing the assumptions on that is vaccine or cure it is almost impossible for us to get that this year so why would you keep the schools locked why are you going to disrupt the waik and neko and all sort of things like that that these children should have when they are not even vulnerable to it now the old people in the system in the schools should take a break let the younger ones the younger teachers let the younger markers of the waik and all of that let them be the ones in charge the older ones the 70 something year old people let them stay away they don't want to die from this thing so that's basically the way it is it has always been the policy of country a country like sweden and basically that should have been our policy from 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 time like from the beginning which we, we don't have the ability to run this thing like the way all those developed countries were able to run it like the way the u.s was able to run it even u.s could not keep it sustained for some people that think that u.s was giving money to their population not every single person it's just people below hundred thousand dollars that they made hundred thousand dollars in 2018 so if you made below hundred thousand dollars in 2018 you're going to is it hundred thousand dollars or even seventy thousand dollars you're going to get a check from the government and it's not even enough to run all your expenses people were still lining up on food lines bread lines and all sort of things like that for them to get basic things for their families and these are not poor people this is simply because the lockdown has made them to lose their job because it destroyed the economy 40 million people are out of work in america of course in nigeria we don't even know the number of people are out of work based on this on this covid 19 lockdown the only sort of reference that we have to that is what the senate is saying that uh, the only reason why they approved buari's 5.5 billion dollars loan is because they are trying to save 20 million jobs nobody knows how they came about that particular number nigeria is not very transparent so nobody really knows anything about that but that's just the case so again assuming that we're going to get a vaccine is not good enough that's just the basic way we are going to put it and then we go to the fact that they say safe like they they, they, they they want it to be safe enough to open which is a very vague term it is not it is not a concrete sort of condition that can be met so what does safe mean if the government doesn't define what safe means it means we can never know when it is going to be when the condition is going to be met for us to what to reopen and honestly i believe they're doing this thing intentionally so that 
they can reopen anytime they think it is safe enough for them it's not about safe enough for you but politically safe enough for them to be able to weather any sort of storm that might come from political criticism from the opposition parties so that's basically what they're trying to do again i've been saying this thing for weeks now it is basically a cya operation cover your ass operation this governance and you know the federal government they are basically trying to do things that will save them any sort of political criticisms that might come from any sort of a negative effect of reopening the economy that's what they are doing and it's not only in nigeria all over the world that's what the politicians have been doing because nobody wants to be blamed for an extra p i mean like like one more person dying you understand so nobody wants to be blamed for excess debt in their nation so that's basically what is happening so we need to define what the safe condition means we don't want any sort of ambiguous terms tell us does do we have to open when the, the, the number of infection rates per day or the number of infections we get per day drops to maybe below 100 drops to maybe below 20 like let's have concrete data let's have concrete numbers that we can follow and we can hope that okay we are already reaching that particular point so we can know when to reopen because now you are basing the reopening of schools on the reopening of interstate lockdown of the lifting of interstate lockdown which is probably going to be up to the end of the lockdown period like it's probably going to be the last thing that's going to be done in lifting the lockdowns totally so that's what it is so it we still don't have any dates for reopening of schools that's basically what you are doing you have not given us any sort of answers so it's almost like they're just giving us all this sort of fake all these sort of vague answers not trying to commit to anything so is it going to be like okay this is social number of deaths per week they were able that once it gets to that particular level we are going to reopen the schools because this is basically what europe did this is basically what america did once the thing fell to a particular level they said okay yeah it has fallen to a particular level the healthcare system is not going to be overwhelmed then we can reopen now it's not until you have zero death it's not going to be possible for you to have zero death not when the who is saying that the coronavirus may actually remain with us like for a long time it might actually become a seasonal disease that comes maybe during the during the cold seasons or whatever like that and then goes away and then comes back again so if that's going to be the situation then we better just open we cannot just deny students their right to education when there's nothing like nothing is going to change in the status quo nothing is going to change in the situation on ground right now so that's basically what i'm going to be saying about that and then we'll go over to the problem that in the united states like you have to just understand that this thing is not as dangerous as they have been claiming it is in the united states all this sort of riots going on over george floyd medical experts in the united states actually encouraged it so if they actually believe that this thing is going to kill all those black people off despite the fact that they realize that black people are dying more from the virus they should be encouraging them to stay away from the streets and stop the virus but they are actually encouraging them to keep doing it they act, i mean if they really believe that black lives black lives matter they should be encouraging the black people to stay off the street because in in riots nobody's caring and or caring about using masks or for the most part about social distancing when it comes to rioting so that's the way it is so there's going to be a spike in the number of cases in the black community because of the black black lives matter riots over the death of george floyd in this period so if this thing is really as deadly as they claim it is, then it is so going to be a very serious problem for them. But nobody's complaining. The medical industry is encouraging this, 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 this protest. They're actually encouraging it, which means they have been lying or not been telling the whole truth this whole time.